Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here. And as you can see, we're in a different filming location than my typical uh, office environment. I'm actually standing in front of the brand new duplex that I bought right here, as you can see. Uh, so today I wanted to go through the numbers on the duplex, basically the closing costs, as well as monthly running costs and etc. So we're gonna be looking at that in later on in today's video, but I wanted to show you guys an exterior view of what the duplex looks like. So uh, we'll look at that right now. All right, so this is the outside view of the duplex here. As you can see, there's two different parts to it. So the first unit is right here on two different levels. So the kitchen and the living room is on the main floor. And then the two bedrooms and the kitchen is upstairs, or sorry, the bathroom is upstairs. And then in the back here, there's a full other unit. So up top has uh, three bedrooms on the main level. There's the living room as well as uh, the kitchen. And then there's a basement that spans the entirety. So I'm actually gonna be moving in July into this unit right here, which is the two bedroom. And I'm, we're gonna run through the numbers on the property that basically explain why uh, I did that and what my, uh, my logic is behind the property. All right, great. So now that we're back in the office, we've taken a look at the outside of the property as well as some photos of the inside of one of the units. I wanna dive into the actual numbers of this property to ultimately explain to you why I purchased the duplex in the first place and what my plans are for the coming years in terms of returns or what exactly I'm expecting in terms of returns over the coming years. So for that, we're gonna be diving into the numbers based on, first of all, the closing costs on the duplex, followed by the monthly running expenses on the duplex, so mortgage, insurance, and et cetera. And from that, we'll be able to look at the actual equity being built up on a yearly basis to ultimately look at the returns that I'm expecting on both year one and year two on the property to hopefully give you guys a better picture of what exactly you can accomplish by investing in real estate and house hacking your way to paying a lot less in monthly housing expenses. And by the way here, do keep in mind that this exercise is going to be theoretical numbers only. And I know that in real life situations, things can happen, uh, situations can arise where unexpected costs come up, uh, a tornado could rip up my roof, etc. So yes, these numbers could be skewed in the future. However, for the sake of this exercise, we're just gonna be looking at the actual revenue from the building, the equity that I'm building up, and then the accounted for expenses expenses on a monthly basis for this property. So let's get right into it here, starting with the closing costs on the property. Right off the bat here, I purchased the duplex for a total of $285,000, of which I put a 5% down on the property, meaning that out of pocket here, I was $14,250 out of pocket on the down payment for this property. Now, since I did only put 5% down on this property, which is below the 20% threshold to be eligible to not have mortgage insurance, I was therefore obligated to get mortgage insurance on my mortgage, meaning that my monthly mortgage payment was a little bit higher, which we're gonna look at in the coming video. Mortgage insurance is equal to 4% of the total value of the mortgage that you took out on the property. So in my particular case with this duplex, the mortgage was $270,750, uh, which was the $285,000 minus my down payment of $14,250. So to that, the 4% mortgage insurance means that I had an extra $10,800 applied to the mortgage bringing my total new loan value to $281,000. $580. On top of that extra mortgage insurance, it gets even worse for the real estate investor that puts less than 20% down on a property. You have to pay what's called a tax on the mortgage insurance, which is gonna vary per different uh, province that you live in. So personally, I live in Quebec, meaning that this tax is 9.975% on top of that $10,830 mortgage insurance. So this is an additional fee that I had to pay upfront of $975. But as we're gonna look at the numbers on the actual closing of this property, I'm gonna take all of these numbers into account in order to show the cash on cash return for year one of the property. Just before we move any further on the calculations of the closing costs for this property, I want to mention the mortgage insurance as well as the tax that I had to pay on the mortgage insurance because I can already see people questioning down in the comments how this could be a financially sound decision based on the fact that my new loan here of 200 181,000 roughly is almost the purchase price of the whole property as a whole of $285,000. The way I personally see it here is the extra $11,500 roughly that I had to pay out on the mortgage insurance as well as the mortgage insurance tax is pretty much expenses that are going to be distributed over the 25 year period that I'm paying down the property.
property in mortgage payments. So this means that on a monthly basis, it's not having a huge impact on additional costs here. It's gonna cost me about 15, $10-15 extra per month, meaning it doesn't have a huge impact on monthly cash flow for the property. And on the flip side here, if I had to wait all the way until I had 20% down for the property, well, this is almost $60,000 in down payment, not including the other closing costs like notary inspection, et cetera. So the opportunity cost of me waiting an extra, let's say two or three years as someone starting out in real estate uh, is going to be an opportunity cost where I'm missing out on potential appreciation of the property as well as cash flow, debt pay down, and then also house hacking if that's something you wanna do. So you'd have to pay a lot more in rent over those extra years. So this is something that I personally in my situation thought it was worth doing uh, and paying that extra $11,500 over the course of that 25 year period. So in practice here, this extra $11,500 is allowing me to deploy $285,000 worth of an asset into the market and getting appreciation on this entire value, as well as taking advantage of debt pay down, cash flow, tax deductions, and essentially living for free as we're gonna see later on in the video. Okay, so at this point, we left off at the down payment of $14,250, as well as the mortgage insurance tax of $975, and then the other closing costs are pretty straightforward. The third closing cost that I encountered here on this property was an inspection, and I paid about $500 for the inspection on this property, which I do realize is somewhat expensive. However, it was really important that I got an inspection on this property based on the fact that it was above 60 years old. So I thought this was really important and there was an additional fee for buildings that were above 50 years old. Next up here was the notary cost, which in my situation was $1,450. And finally, the welcome tax on this property was about $2,700. All combined together here, this brings my total out-of-pocket cost on this property to $19,875. Now that we've looked at the total combined out-of-pocket cost to purchase this property, I wanna look at the monthly running cost for the property to ultimately be able to calculate the cash flow on this duplex. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video when we were standing in front of the duplex, the two units are currently rented out to tenants. The first one being the three bedroom unit at $900 per month and then the second unit being the two bedroom unit at $800 per month currently as we stand. This brings the total monthly revenues to $1,700 per month. Now obviously once the lease of the two bedroom unit is up on July 1st, I'm gonna be retaking that unit and living in it. So therefore I'm not gonna be collecting rent on that unit, but don't worry, I'm gonna take all that into consideration when we look at the calculations of cash flow and returned over the first year later on in the video. The monthly expenses on the property are also really straightforward, starting with the mortgage payments of $1,326 per month. Following the mortgage payments on the property, we have building insurance, which is $128 per month, and then the total taxes, including municipal and school taxes, are $250 per month, bringing the total expenses on this property to $1,704 per month. So with that said, where does this leave us on a monthly cash flow analysis for this property? Well, it's not too complicated here. If we take the revenues of the property and subtract from that the total monthly cost of the property, I'm left paying $5 out of my own pocket for this seven month period where I'm not gonna be living in the property. Well, at first glance here, this might not seem like a great investment because essentially I'm losing $5 out of my pocket every single month. That doesn't seem like a great investment. Well, the thing is, I'm not only considering the cash flow on a monthly basis over this seven month period into my calculations. I'm also taking into account the equity that I'm building up in the property, as well as the tax deductions I'm gonna be able to benefit from, not even counting the fact that after this seven month period, I'm gonna be taking back this property and therefore significantly diminishing my living expenses by living in this property. And then as of July 1st, the term of the lease of the three bedroom unit is also going to be up and therefore the monthly rent is going to go up to about $950 per month. So we're gonna take all this into consideration in the cash flow calculations coming up shortly. But before we can actually calculate the overall returns in year one and two on this property, we need to take a look at the equity that's being built up in the duplex. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, so obviously before we can actually look at what type of returns I'm gonna get with the cash flow and the equity for both year one and two, we need to take a look at what type of equity is gonna be built up in this property over that period of time. 
So this is mortgagecalculator.org. It's a calculator that's gonna show you how much you're gonna pay on a monthly basis and then show you the difference in principal and uh, interest payments over every single year or month, depending on what you select. So we're gonna put here the home value, which was $281,580 after the mortgage insurance uh, was applied to the mortgage. So in this ca particular case, we can put 0% down payment because we've already taken this into account with this calculation uh, and then added that extra uh, amount of uh, mortgage insurance. So this means the total loan amount is $281,580. And then the interest rate that I got on this was 2.94% five year fixed. So over the 25 year period, we're starting in December of 2019. And then here uh, we're putting 000 because we're counting this in my other calculations. And we're not gonna account for it in this calculation. We just wanna know what the monthly payment is gonna be for the mortgage. So we're looking here at uh, the show annual amortization table. And then from this, we can calculate it. So my monthly mortgage payment on this property is $1,326.51, pardon me. So this means that in 2019, for that last one month, I'm having to pay $689 in interest and $636 in principal. Then on year two, which, well, in this calculation, actually we were saying it was year one. So in 2020 here, I'm receiving $7,762 in principal towards that loan. Once year two rolls around, so 2021, I'm then accumulating $7,993 in principal, which as you can see, as of year two is already more than the mortgage interest I'm paying on the loan. This is unbelievable. And as of year two, I'm already getting more principal than interest pay down. So uh, yeah, this is honestly a, due to the fact that I had a really good interest rate. And um, obviously this we're gonna take into account for the rest of the calculation. So let's get into that right now. So as the numbers stand right now, I'm about $35 in the hole on a cash flow basis over those seven months where I'm not gonna be living in the property. Once I do end up moving into the property though, I'm gonna be paying about $755 out of my own pocket to live in this property on a cash flow basis monthly because the rent is still gonna be $950 that I'm getting in revenue from the other unit. And then to offset my other expenses, I'm gonna to have to pay out about $755 out of my own pocket. This means that for the rest of the six months in 2020 where I will be living in this property, I'm gonna to have to pay out about $4,530 out of my own pocket to be living in that two bedroom unit. If we then add to that the negative $35 in cash flow that I incurred over those first seven months where I wasn't living in the property, this means that in year one of 2020, if we include the last month of 2019, I will have paid out of my pocket $4,565 out of my pocket to live in this property. And just to give you some perspective here, I'm currently living in a two bedroom apartment in the same city in which I purchased this duplex. And the current apartment I live in is about the same size as uh, this two bedroom unit that I will be living in. I'm currently paying about $1,325 per month in rent, meaning that over a one year basis, this is just under $16,000 in total rent. So what I will be paying this less than $5,000 is less than a third of what I'd be paying for market value of an apartment if I was renting. And that's not even taking into account the fact that I'm building up equity uh, by purchasing this home. So at this point, if you're keeping track here, we're currently at $4,565 out of my own pocket to live in the property as well as own the property. But from there, if we take into account the equity that's being built up in December of 2019, as well as the entire course of 2020, this equates to $8,400 in accumulated equity. So if we take into account the equity versus what I paid out of pocket, well, this means that it'd currently be at $3,830, I think roughly in the negative, meaning that theoretically, this building is basically paying me to live in the property. 
This is because even though I can't actually tap into equity on a super liquid basis, like for example, cash in a bank account or stocks and equities, this is still equity that is mine and I built up in the property. So I absolutely count it as income in the property. Now from this point, we could also dive even deeper and look at tax deductions from owning real estate. But for the sake of this video, we'd have to look at my marginal tax rate and look at a bunch of different calculations. So I'm gonna only keep it to the cash flow that we just looked at and the equity for my calculations. But do note that you would also benefit from some hefty tax deductions when you invest in real estate. You can pretty much deduct interest paid on your mortgage as well as closing costs and other fees. So this is something that would theoretically bring the actual returns in year one and moving forward at an even higher value. So once again here, at this point, I'm at $3,835 in the positive in the green. And when we compare this to the $19,875 that was out of pocket at the beginning to purchase the property, uh, well, this represents a 19.3% return in year one for the cash flow and the equity, which is really not bad. And if we were to consider the fact that I'm house hacking and therefore saving about, uh, what is that, like $600 in rent per month, this is an even larger return, but I'm not gonna count that because it's not a true uh, return on my investment. And although this could change in the near future, my plans for the property are I'm gonna move into it for about a one year period and then leave the property, rent out both units once again, and then repeat the process that I just did. And once I do end up leaving the property, I'm estimating that in rent, I'm gonna be able to get between $2,100 and $2,200 in gross rent on a monthly basis because currently, especially the $800 per month two bedroom unit I'm gonna be living in is severely under market in my personal opinion. And even the other unit, which is $950 in 2020, uh, this is also gonna go up because it's also under market value. So this means that at that period I should be able to get between 350 and about $490 in cash flow on a monthly basis on top of the equity that I'm going to be building up over the year two period of owning that property. So at that point once I get about $400 give or take in cash flow per month on the property and combined to that the $8,000 in equity built up in year two uh, I will have already made back my 100% uh, of the funds that I invested in the property on year one, which was just under $20,000. So I really hope you guys enjoyed how transparent I was with the numbers on this property from the closing costs, how much I put into it versus the monthly cash flow and the running costs on that property. I personally enjoy it when other people are transparent about their numbers because I think it gives you guys a better perspective as to what you can expect when investing in real estate, how it can benefit you, how you can house hack, live for free essentially, depending on the deal you get. And I know that for different markets across the country in Canada, as well as in different markets across other countries, this information can be applied differently. However, I still think it's a really good concrete example that can show you a real life example of what you can expect when investing in real estate. So once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if you enjoyed how transparent I was and it gave you some value. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn more about investing in real estate and especially investing in equity markets like the stock market, ETFs, REITs, all that. We cover a bunch of these videos on my channel that I highly encourage you to check out. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.